In this presentation, we will understand what is D flip flop and how we can make a D flip flop by using a SR flip flop. You already know what is SR flip flop, and I have made the truth table for SR flip flop because this is the important thing from which we will derive the conclusion for our D flip flop. Let's examine this truth table. You can see if I want to store zero then I have to give 0 1 and if I want to store 1 then I have to give 1 0 as the input my s will be 0 my r will be 1 then I have 0 stored in my sr flip-flop if my s is 1 r is 0 then I have 1 stored in my sr flip-flop now you can see a very interesting thing that this s and r are always complement to each other when s is 0 r is 1 and when s is 1 r is 0 so why we have to give this s and r individually we can just give one input to this flip-flop and complement the other that's what we have to do to get the d flip-flop now you might be thinking that what about this case you can see this is an invalid case we are not going to use it so if you just want your data to be stored then you can have your D flip-flop where D is what data and it is one of the most commonly used flip-flop because you just give your input store the data and remove the clock your data will be there so it is a very important flip-flop and JK flip-flop is the another most widely used flip-flop that we will see so what we have to do to convert this SR flip-flop to D flip-flop is to let me extend this input I will take this input use a inverter and give the output of the inverter to R and this input I will call as D so now you can see that when D is 0 it means when S is 0 I will have R as 1 that was this case when D is 1 it means S is 1 and my R is 0 it means this case so I need only a single input that is my D and to get the other I will complement it this is what we do to have our D flip-flop by using the SR flip-flop so I can make a D flip-flop like this in my D flip-flop there is a single input that I will call D and I'm having my clock of course and the two outputs q and q and complement and this thing this thing is what it is actually let me change the color for this if I hide this circuit and take my clock out so you can say that this circuit is inside this box now this is how we will make a D flip-flop it's time to move to the truth table for D flip-flop okay a very simple truth table you will have you will have your clock and a single input D okay and output Q and plus one now when clock is zero it means this circuit won't take any input and the output will be what the previous input so QN is my output in this case when clock is high and D is low it means what S is 0 and R is 1 and for this particular case I'm having QN plus 1 as 0 so this is 0 now when clock is high and D is 1 I will have my S as 1 and R equal to 0 it means this case and I'm having Q1 plus 1 as 1 and uh, the other cases like S equal to 1 R equal to 1 is not possible in this D flip-flop because you can see a uh, inverter attached here and simply we cannot have this configuration so this is the truth table for your D flip-flop a very simple truth table in the next presentation what we will have is the characteristic table and the excitation table for the D flip-flop using this truth table so see you in the next presentation